Of course, you're not working to import as many new citizens as we can into the United States to replace all the disobedient ones who didn't vote for us. In other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. The great replacement theory, it's a lie, they yelled. George Soros has nothing to do with that. Stop talking. They said we were espousing something called the great replacement theory, a well-known racist fantasy. The great replacement. They acknowledge that it's real and they love it. This policy is called the great replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. The great replacement plan is working. That was the most popular cable news show host in America using overt white supremacist talking points on his program. Now, on this show, we've talked about how the Great Replacement Theory is extremely dangerous and explicitly white nationalist. But over the weekend, as you probably heard, one white supremacist decided to take action over this particular issue that's been talked about on Fox News. And he committed a massacre in Buffalo, killed 10 people. As John Keeley of Common Dreams reports, taken into custody at the scene of the mass shooting at the Topps Market and identified as Peyton Gendron, the white 18-year-old male charged with the murders of the victims live-streamed his attack online, where he also posted a detailed 180-page document that has been described by those who have reviewed it, including journalists and law enforcement, as a white nationalist manifesto rife with anti-black racism, anti-Semitism, and conspiracy theories about white replacement. According to Local News 4, in Buffalo, the document, which News 4 has reviewed, plotted the attack in grotesque detail. The writer plotted his actions down to the minute, including diagrams of his path through the store, and said he specifically targeted the Topps Market's location on Jefferson Avenue because its zip code has the highest percentage of black people close enough to where he lives. Now, in his manifesto, he referenced the Christchurch shooter who murdered 51 people in a mosque in New Zealand. And, I mean, this is going to keep happening. That's really the tragedy of the situation, right? This is going to continue to happen. Um, specifically, domestic terror attacks by white supremacists will continue to happen because this is the specific environment that right-wing media is fostering currently. And it's not like this is some incident that happened in a vacuum and it's isolated. No, this is all the culmination of years and years of brainwashing by the far right. As Sam Sachs put it, the forces that drove the Buffalo mass shooter are the same that drove reactionaries to storm the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. These aren't isolated incidents. They're all part of the same political project, and it's making gains. And he's absolutely correct about that, and there's a lot of blame to go around, to be clear. But nobody has done more, contributed more to the project of mainstreaming white supremacy than Tucker Carlson of Fox News. And just a couple of weeks ago, the New York Times published an article about Tucker Carlson explaining in detail how he did mainstream white supremacy. It's titled How Tucker Carlson Stoked White Fear to Conquer Cable, and that he did. But in response to this article, did Tucker Carlson offer some thoughtful response? Did he explain why, no, this isn't white nationalism? He didn't deny it. He just posted a picture of himself with the newspaper laughing it off. Yeah, so it's a big joke to him. And perhaps he sees this as a victory. We don't necessarily know what is in the mind of Tucker Carlson, but what we do know is what he is putting in the minds of white supremacists, like the one that committed this massacre. And, you know, some of you might say, this isn't Tucker Carlson's fault, because he's talking about the Great Replacement Theory, but he's not encouraging people to take action themselves. But to that, I'd say you're wrong, because he actually has, on multiple occasions, called people to take action in the United States trying to constantly egg them on and say, how long are we going to put up with this? Take a look at this compilation. They're trying to change the population of the United States. And they hate it when you say that because it's true, but that's exactly what they're doing. Is anyone pushing back at all? I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? How much longer do you think Americans will put up with this? How long before Americans start to take border enforcement into their own hands? Yep absolutely the right to know. We should demand to know now. Every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. No, they're not allowed to do that. Why are we putting up with this? Most people go along with this absurd standard. They dutifully shut up. They don't think they have a choice. You wonder how much longer they imagine Americans are going to go along with this. It can't go on forever, but you can see why they're trying it. Demographic change is the key to the Democratic Party's political ambitions. Our leaders have no right to encourage foreigners to move to this country in order to change election results. Abrupt change causes social chaos, always. What will the consequences of that change, of that revolution be? 
in your bones, you know the answer. It's terrifying. And it doesn't have to happen. You cannot overstate the scale of demographic change underway right now in the United States. It's a direct assault on our democracy. They don't even really care about your vote anymore. Their goal is to make you irrelevant. You're just an American citizen, shut up and obey. They know that calling you a racist is the fastest way to make you obey. In other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it, so shut up. <laughs> if you don't obey them, they denounce you as a racist. Why do they do this? They do it because it works. But here's the thing, it can only work if you play along with it, and we don't plan to. Make no mistake about it, these are implicit calls for violence. Listen to the language here. Is anyone pushing back at all? Nobody's doing something about this replacement of us. How long before Americans take border enforcement into their own hands? That's a message to the viewer. He's implanting in their heads this thought that maybe they should be the ones to take action because these immigrants that Democrats are importing here is taking away our democracy. It's stripping their voting power, which is untrue. But he's getting them to think something has to be done. Why is nobody standing up? Why are we putting up with this? He called uh, importing of immigrants a revolution of sorts. He said the words revolution. So you've got to understand that over the years, he slowly but surely ramped up the language. And over the course of multiple years, he's fed his viewers a consistent stream of white supremacist talking points. And the more his viewers buy into the premise, the more explicit he can be. So he doesn't have to dance around the issue of white supremacy. He can just explicitly say, they're replacing you. The great replacement is real. Diversity is bad. Immigrants make the country dirtier. And they believe it because they've already bought into the premise. And even actual out and proud white nationalists like Nick Fuentes are saying... Yeah, what I'm saying is what Tucker Carlson is saying, so I guess my talking points are more mainstream than uh, I previously thought. Take a look. I watched a clip from Tucker Carlson's show, and I noticed that Tucker Carlson was saying the exact same thing that I said last night, and that's okay. And in the spirit of America first, and we've got to get used to saying this, I saw that monologue and I said, okay. Okay, so, you know, my talking points, I guess, are now mainstream that enough that they're on Fox News. Yeah, that's a white nationalist saying, I'm hearing what I think, what I say on Fox News through Tucker Carlson. So make no mistake about it, Tucker Carlson has blood on his hands. He helped to inspire this. He's not the only individual, but he's one of the most influential pushers of white supremacy. The most uh, significant individual on the right who's mainstreamed explicit white supremacy and things are going to get worse he's going to tear this country apart but fox news is perfectly fine with him doing that because he brings eyeballs to their network and it's all about money over everything else so this situation is going to get worse in the united states because the right is continuing to push for violence they're amping up their rhetoric they're becoming more extreme and far right and the mainstream media in this country is so bamboozled by the right themselves that we're still talking about the far left and the threat that they pose as we have multiple domestic terror attacks being carried out by white nationalists. So it, it's horrifying. But the last thing that I want to end on is honoring the victims here because I think that their names are really important. So uh, this is according to NBC News. Nine of the 10 victims have been identified at the time that I record this video. And their names are Catherine Massey, Aaron Salter, Pearlie Young, Ruth Whitfield, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Roberta Drury, Andre Elliott McNeil, and Margus Morrison. I feel absolutely horrible for them. They were just there at the grocery store. One of them was picking out a birthday cake for his son. Um, and then they were murdered by a white supremacist because he was uh, egged on by extremists. And he became an extremist himself. And he decided he's not going to sit by and take it that he should be the one to take action after being convinced that um, he's being replaced. White supremacy is a sickness, and our institutions have white supremacy embedded in them, and this disease is prevalent all throughout this country. And unless we actually stop white supremacy by removing it from institutions and pushing back against it aggressively, things like this will continue to happen because this is the environment that the far right has fostered 
and they're going to try to deny responsibility. We're seeing it online. They're denying that, right? They're saying, no, this isn't a white supremacist. The shooter's actually a leftist. Like, they're going to do that because they refuse to believe that what they're doing is leading to violence, but make no mistake about it. It is leading to violence, and a lot of them, like Tucker Carlson, they want this. This isn't like, you know, a, an unintended consequence. This is a feature of their rhetoric. This is what they wanted. It's this, It's the desired outcome.